Hi, I'm Logan, and today we're going to be going through a foundational GRE math problem. The topic is exponents, so it's going to test you on those exponent rules, and the problem format is a quantitative comparison problem. This is one where they show you quantity A, they show you quantity B, and your job is to compare those two things. Which is greater? Is it A? Is it B? Are they equal? Or is there not enough information to tell? Okay, go ahead and try this one, and then I'll show you how I would do it. All right, so the comparison here, quantity A, quantity B, um, the first thing I notice is that there's exponents on both sides, and, and I'm inclined to try to make those exponents match each other or maybe make the bases match each other. That way I can make that comparison more easily. Uh, and by the way, if you're tempted to go to the calculator for this, just remember the GRE calculator only has eight digits, so these numbers are actually going to be too big to put into that calculator. You're going to need to do something by hand. Okay, I'm going to show you uh, an easy trap to fall into on this problem. You probably know that if you're multiplying with exponents, let's say x squared times x cubed, you're going to add those exponents and get something like, in this case, x to the fifth. So it's tempting to take 2 to the fifth, 7 to the tenth, and say, well, 2 times 7 is 14. 5 plus 10, add those exponents, is 15. And boom, it looks just like quantity B. But is that correct? Actually, no, because these rules, these main exponent rules, we need the same base. So that means that, you know, what we did here, check, that's all good. This no good because they're not the same base. 2 and 7, I can't multiply them together and add those exponents together. I can only add those exponents if I have the same base to begin with. So let's get rid of this and try the way that I would actually do it from the start. Okay, so how do you do this one if you can't uh, smush together that 2 and that 7 to get a 14? Well, you can do the opposite. That 14 over there in quantity B, let's take a look there. Why quantity B? Well, actually, if you know your exponent rules and you remember that we can only use them if it's the same base, quantity A is a no-go. There's not much more we can do to combine uh, those numbers. But maybe I can make some adjustments over here. 14, you can express 14 as 2 times 7. I can factor that out. And that exponent is going to hang around. It's going to stay up there as the exponent on this 2 times 7. And what happens then is that the exponent distributes itself. Uh, so it's going to come down onto the 2, 2 to the 15th, 7 to the 15th. Uh, and now check this out. I don't have the same exponents, but now I have the same bases. I have a base of 2 and 7 on the left and a base of 2 and 7 on the right in quantity B. And the quantity of uh, exponent or excuse me, the value of the exponents, are higher in both cases on the right in quantity B. So what that means is I have more 2s in quantity B, I have more 7s in quantity B. B is greater. More 2s, more 7s being multiplied. That's going to accumulate to a larger number, actually a much larger number. So the correct answer is B. Quantity B is greater. What are some takeaways from this problem that you might be able to use in other ones? First, uh, be careful about those exponent rules. They only work uh, when the base is the same. Second, this trick we used over there in quantity B, the factoring of a base underneath an exponent, that is one that you are very likely going to use on some GRE problems. The GRE loves to make us factor bases uh, to get the prime factors and bring those exponents down onto those factors. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more of these Math Spotlight videos from Manhattan Prep, and tell us in the comments how you solved this one.